here at the University of Waterloo, Ontario District event with Team 4039 Makeshift. I've got Isaiah, Tia, Will and Kieran here with me and they're going to show me a little bit about their robot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and front runners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Okay, Isaiah, if you could show me the path that the coral takes throughout your robot. Yeah, so as you can see here, we've got our hopper. And the idea of that is that we feed the coral game piece through the hopper and uh, we can intake a coral for you if you want. Let's do that. So from the human player station, it goes in and then we've intaken the coral. And then from here, this end effector can pivot up and down depending on our scoring states. So for example, our L4 score, it pivots up like this, indexes a bit. We won't show you that now unless we'd be up in the air and whatever. And then we pivot back down, score the game piece, and that's our L4 score. Then we, uh, then for L2 and 3, our end effector sort of goes, uh, it goes up into this position with it sort of horizontal. This allows us to score on the L2 and 3 branches. And then for L1, we, um, we pivot it up like this, and then we sort of just sort of spit it out onto the trough. Yeah. During the actual uh, match, we auto-align to the segment we want to score on, and as we auto-align, it pivots up and indexes the coral, and then we go up and score it. And that's all one fluid motion? Yeah, that's one fluid motion. Awesome, yeah. thank you. Okay, can you explain the elevator? Um, so, yeah, um, we haven't done an elevator in like 10 years. And that was the first time, the only time we've ever done an elevator. So we really wanted to just keep it simple. So we, um, our first idea was this fancy like in tube, half, half in tube, half out tube, like rigging a uh, continuous elevator. But uh, that was way too complicated for us. So um, we decided to go with uh, basically a cost elevator, um, a cascading elevator. And we use the SDS bearing blocks um, we use a chain and rope for our rigging. So that's L2, L3, L3, and then L4. So it can reach pretty high. Um, I can't remember the exact height off the top of my head. It was around seven feet, nice. um, the max height. So yeah, we have um, the cable track attached to it um here and we have two for um the intake or not the intake the end effector and then another for the coral whacker well, for not doing an elevator in 10 years you guys have done a great job oh, and i love you. the paint too when it goes oh, yeah. up in the full rainbow shows thank you it's awesome okay can you walk me through your drivetrain a little bit yeah of course we have a pretty simple drivetrain uh, our drive base. It's 26 by 26 inches. And we have this, one of the fun things about our drivetrain is it actually dips down in the middle. So we found that with our elevator, it wouldn't work if we lowered the entire belly pan. So we just dipped it down in the middle a bit so we could lower our weight, especially the weight of our battery, which is very heavy. Um, one of the most notable things with our drivetrain though is our swerve modules. So we run um, like RevMax swerves modules. But what we did as one of our preseason projects is we uh, modified it so it would fit the Krakens. Where did the swerve module go? We've got one right there. We modified it in 3D printed parts as well as um, special gears that we got uh, custom metal 3D printed from a company. And which meant we were one of the first teams in the world, I believe, to have these. They eventually came out with adapters for them but we were one of the first teams to have that another fun thing with our swerve modules is our wheels 
So instead of just using off the shelf wheels, we 3D print our own wheels. Actually, I have someone some right here. This is a brand new wheel, the blue one right here. Mm -hmm. And then this is one that we ran. Th this is it after 50 matches at our practice field. So they're pretty reliable, pretty durable. And they we, we tested them a bunch of times and they're actually, we found better than the off the shelf drive uh, wheels. So you said that's after 50 matches. How often do you replace them? Do you replace them at all when you're at competition? Uh, yes, at competitions, we usually uh, replace them before playoffs-ish. We usually judge it based off of how worn down they are, but usually before playoffs. And that, does that affect your driving or like your autos at all? Uh, a little bit if it's too worn down, but it doesn't get that worn down very often. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so just starting off at the front, here we have two lime lights. Um, so we use those mostly for pose combined with the odometry to know where we are on the field at all times using the April tags. So uh, that's important for two reasons. One, we use it for aligning to um, the reef. So we look at our pose and figure out where we need to go to get to where we want to be. And then also um, during end game, we have a fully automated climb so we use these to auto align um, to the cage and then moving into the automated climb, we then raise the climb, uh, the little plate back here and drive into the cage as far as we think we need to go and deploy this little foot to then winch down. Um, so that is fully automated. And then in the end effector, we have these two beam brakes and basically the beam brakes uh, just tell us where the piece is. So because of the way we score L4, we need to index the piece inside of the um, end effector. So we can use the beam brakes to always know where the piece is relative to the end effector. So when we do our flip, we can throw it back the right amount. Cool, and you said you have a fully automated climb. Do you know about how long that takes? Um, so when it's working pretty good, we can get it in like 10 seconds. Uh, it's a pretty good estimate, yeah. 10 seconds, I'd say. Cool, thank you very much. Okay, and Isaiah and Kieran are gonna explain a little bit more about how their climb sequence works. Okay. So, basically, our climb, we wanted to keep it really simple. Attention. So, Attention. the idea of it is that, if you look over here, we have this hook here, and the idea is that we drive up to the cage with this pitched up, we hook onto the cage, we drive back, we pivot it down, and then we deploy this little kicker, if you want to do that. And so the idea of this is that it holds on to the bottom of the cage so that we don't have to solely rely on the friction on the hook. So it just made our climb very consistent. Uh, additionally, something cool we had made is over here. So one of the design requirements we set for our hopper is that we didn't want to put a single motor on it, and we wanted to save those for other parts of the robot. So to flip the hopper base plate up when we'd like to climb, we use the climber, if you want to show that. We use the climber and we move it up and then we hold on via the magnets over there, which allows us to hook on and climb. So the way that we winch down with our, ele or with our elevator, our climber, um, we have these gas, uh, or gas shocks over here that constantly are putting force on the climber. And then we use this rope right here to winch it down with these 60 to one gear ratio near brushless motors. And then we just, it winches it down. Yeah. Awesome, it's a good way to save some motors for your other subsystems. Okay, so this is makeshift robot Cascade, right? And you guys are currently in first, so best of luck for the rest of the competition. And we can catch you at District Champs as well. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and frontrunners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu first.